Hey folks, we're on our way over to one of our properties, um, a small 50 acre lot here, but it's located in uh, just a perfect spot. It borders up to a public hunting land pretty close and um, we have no problem with trespassing from the public hunting because it's, it's hard to get access to. But anyway, I'm on my way over now to check some um, trail cams, and uh, it's a little late. I know it's September the 8th, but I'm going to start uh, a couple mock scrapes with um, some grapevines. I just cut down, but you don't touch them down to where the, you don't touch them with your bare hands down to where the, um, deer are going to smell it and then we'll just tie it up uh, in a tree limb somewhere so that it's hanging vertical and moves around but it's still stiff enough for them to be able to rub their preorbital glands on it and their uh, forehead glands and the bottom of that um, the bottom of that vine will be about waist high so that the fawns can rub it too so when we get up here and get to doing this here um, I'll get some more video for you and show you how we do it okay we're on the property now going down the driveway and then we'll start cutting up through the uh, logging road that goes up through the woods now I won't do this during season a matter of fact probably after this here I won't do it again driving up through there and, and uh, disturbing the area but the deer actually bed we're actually going up on a ridge and they actually bed on the other side in the thicket I mean thicket thicket so, um, we're going to try to sneak up. Of course, you know, they're going to hear us anyway. Um, that's why the big bucks become big bucks is because they pay attention to small details like uh, vehicle motor, uh, talking, uh, what have you. Okay, folks, uh, we're up here at the stand location number one on this property, and um, my tree stand is sound. But uh, a big old pine tree has fallen down right on this road that goes around through there it's sort of like a road but uh, they the deer can get around the end of it so I'm not going to bother that section of it <clears throat> but I think everything else will be fine There's a lot of blowdowns here this is the finger of pines that runs down through the center of two hardwood patches and this is probably I want to say 40 to 50 yards wide and it's a perfect travel corridor when they're coming through <clears throat> gives them cover and they can see out one end and smell out the other one side I mean so there's the other patch the nice eight point that I shot is just right over there on the edge of that hardwood where it joins this pine thicket. Okay folks, I'm here at um, stand site number two on this 50 acre property here. My stand is uh, it's right over there. That's where I shot the nice eight point last year uh, with my recurve. He actually walked right th right through here out of this pine thicket here. 
50 yard wide, but he come from the bedding area that's over the ridge, and he come up and come through this pine thicket, him and another big buck and some does, and three of them went down through this way, and a bigger buck than the eight point I shot turned and went straight out the pine finger. Uh, the reason we set this stand up right here is because we set it up on a Monday, uh, October the 8th, I believe it was, because October the 6th, a Saturday, my son Luke and I were on the other side of the pine thicket, um, where the pine thicket and the other hardwoods uh, transition right over there at an angle and we watched them come up through out of our bow range and cross right here so we opted to set a, another stand location right here and the first set is uh, when I took that buck that's my opinion the first set is always the best uh, especially when you're hunting mature whitetails and what I have here is a uh, grapevine, a wild grapevine, three quarters to an inch. Uh, what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to make a vertical uh, licking branch or mock scrape out of this. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take, I don't touch that end down there, what they're going to be licking, but this one up here will be way up in the air. Um, I'll tie this paracord around this here vine and then I'll wrap it around uh, a limb over here and I'll pull it up until the bottom of this grapevine is about belly or stomach height to me. Um, then after I get that done I'll, I'll take a, a stick, a pretty stout stick and I'll move the leaves and grass out from underneath of it and scrape the ground as if a buck or a deer was pawing and then this will probably uh, freak some of you out but I'll go ahead and urinate in that bare spot um, for those of you that are not sure about urine in the woods urine is an attractant not a repellent um, I learned that in my days of trapping coyotes and fox Human sweat is what repels when you drip it on the ground or they begin to smell it. But the excretion from your body as far as urine goes uh, or defecation does not, in my opinion, spook deer. Alright, I'm going to go ahead on over here and hook this up. So, come along with me. Okay, we're here where I'm going to make the mock scrape. If you look up, you'll see the branch right there coming out. I'm going to tie the paracord right on where they bind, where they Y there, and bring it down to just so the bottom, the bottom of the um, grapevine is about stomach height to me, and it'll be probably. right in that area there so when they're coming down this trail matter of fact this uh, old logging road got narrowed down right here by this deadfall and I'm not going to touch it because it just funnels them down tight to where they have to come and find this uh, mock scrape they'll walk right by it anyway and then if you look You'll see my stand right there. That's where I was last October the 10th. I believe it was when I shot that eight point buck. When it walked right by that big oak tree right there in the background. Okay, let me get started on this here.
hung. Imagine you can see it here. Here's the bottom, right about my stomach height. Plenty for any uh, size deer to come in. Now what I want to do... down to the bare dirt and the next um, you can see it there we've got it down to the bare dirt right underneath of the vine now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do finishing touches to this here but Obviously that will be off camera, so we'll catch you when we have some action here. I'm going to put a trail camera up. Uh, one of these trees here close by. Um, so it can catch the activity coming up the road, down the road, and at the scrape. Now I'll have to... I like to put my trail cameras up about six feet and point them down just a hair. Uh, it seems like there's uh, less that the deer notice them uh, when they do go off. If they do have a red light, if they're up higher, it seems to be out of their line of sight. And I have less uh, spooks from the deer by doing it that way. And I also will point my trail cameras whenever I can, either north or south, so we don't get the rising of the sun or the setting thereof of the same, the sun. Okay, here's the box scrape vine. There's the finished scrape. And there's the trail cam. about six feet, five and a half, six feet off the ground, tilted downward just slightly. There's my stand. The camera's actually facing north. So we shouldn't get any morning sun or evening sun fading it out, blurring it out. All right, folks, we'll keep you posted on any activities. Okay, folks, I just finished putting uh, trail cameras up at my uh, two stand locations on this uh, 50 acre parcel here one on either side of the pine thickets uh, pine thicket it's a, actually not a thicket it's just a strip of pines that's fairly thick in the middle probably 50 yards wide in between two hardwood uh, sections there and uh, on the eastern side of the pine uh, finger it goes uh, it's on top of a ridge and it goes down a steep embankment where the deer bed during the day and uh, we have a stand on either side of that pine thicket there uh, for the wind direction depending on the wind and as I told you before, the eight point that I shot out of this stand here on the eastern side was uh, two days after we put the stand in and I got a favorable crosswind. It was actually blowing, uh, coming from the southeast and blowing away from uh, where the deer were coming from. So, this is JW. I'm going back on out of here and uh, see what else I can get into today. Y'all have a great day. You're watching Stephen's Family Outdoors. God bless. Music